today we're going to be making a casual skirt. The first thing you want to do in order to make your skirt is to take your measurements. The size of the rectangles that you need to cut for this project will depend very much on your measurements. You need both your hip measurement and your waist measurement for this project as well as how long you want your skirt to be. There is a worksheet on my website which can help you with all of the math and the measurements as well as your cut layout if you're interested in that. So you need two rectangles to create the skirt. Also, if you'd like, you can add pockets. Um, you need four pocket pieces um, and cut your fabric right side together if you can because you do want two and two so that you get mirror images. You also need a piece of elastic um, I'm using one inch wide elastic that is exactly my waist measurement for this project. Um, how much elastic you need may vary depending on the stretchiness of your elastic. This one stretches a whole lot, so I cut mine exactly my waist measurement. To start, let's work on our pocket pieces. To start on the pockets, take two of your pocket pieces and place them right sides together. So you're gonna have a left hand piece and a right hand piece, um, and they're gonna to be touching with right sides together. Grab your pocket pattern piece and cut out the curved edge and place it on top of your fabric. Trace this curved edge here. And now use your scissors to trim that away. And your pocket pieces now have a curved edge. You're only gonna do this to these two pieces. The other two pocket pieces are gonna stay in, intact exactly the way they were when you first cut your pattern piece. But these two will help to create the exterior pocket shape on our skirt. Next, lay the panel of your skirt that you would like to be the front of the skirt right side up. So this is my front skirt rectangle um, and make sure that you identify the top of the skirt. Um, so this edge right here is going to be the top of my skirt. Um, that's important, especially if you have directional fabric. Um, so my fabric is very much directional. I don't want my little hedgehogs and foxes to be upside down. So I'm gonna make sure that I've identified um, the top edge, which is the length I generated using my hip measurement. Once you identified the top edge of your skirt, let's go ahead and add the pockets. So take one of the pocket pieces you just cut and align it with the left hand side. Take the other pocket piece and align it with the right hand side. And notice that both touch the top edge as well. Now we're gonna pin these in place and we're going to sew around the curves that we just cut with a quarter inch seam allowance. But let's pin first. Okay, let's go to the sewing machine and let's sew the curved edges with a quarter inch seam allowance. The pockets are now attached to the skirt front. So our next step is to trim this section off. We're gonna cut along the edge of the pocket piece. Next, we're gonna clip the curve so that it lays nice when we turn it. And now we're gonna turn the pocket to the inside. And when you do, you end up with a nice curved edge. We're gonna repeat the process 
on the other side and then we're going to go to the ironing board. Both of my pockets have been trimmed and turned and now I want to press. So I want to be able to see the pretty fabric on both sides of my pocket edge here. So make sure that it's fully turned, make sure the stitches are all the way at the edge here and then go ahead and press it flat. Repeat on the other side. The top front edge of your skirt should now have two nice, clean, pressed, curved edges where your pockets are going to be. So for our next step, we're going to top stitch that in place. We're gonna to top stitch around this edge and this edge with about a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, and just for decoration, I like to stitch twice. So I'm gonna sew with both about an eighth of an inch seam allowance and a quarter inch, just because I like the look of that twin stitching for garments. Um, so you can do just one row of stitching if you like, you can do two if you prefer, or if you have a twin needle, that's a great option as well. So let's head to the sewing machine. When I'm top stitching, I do like to increase my stitch length to about 3.5. Repeat on the other side. We've now stitched our pocket pieces in place. And as you can see, I've done my two rows of stitching here just for looks. Um, but now we're ready to complete the pockets. So let's take our top piece and let's flip it over. So we're now looking at the back side of our front panel. We're gonna complete the pockets. So we're going to need our other pocket pieces, the ones that we did not cut the windows out of. And we're gonna take these pocket pieces and place them right side down on top of our previous pocket pieces. So your pockets should be right sides together. And when you look at your skirt top piece, your skirt front, it should look as if it's complete. So what we had, it looks like a little window was cut out. When you put this piece back on, it should look as if, as if that piece is no longer missing. Okay? So we're gonna do the same thing on both sides. What we're gonna do next is we are going to sew the pocket pieces together, just the pocket pieces. So you're gonna grab these two pocket pieces, the ones that are right sides together and touching, and you're going to pin the curved edge together. Now we're not gonna pin it to the skirt front, we're just pinning the two pocket pieces. Okay. Once you have that pinned, you're gonna take it to your sewing machine and you're gonna sew down here and all the way around here, but you're only gonna sew the pocket. So what you have to do is you have to pull all the skirt fabric out of the way so that you only have the two pocket pieces and then sew along your edge. So make sure all of this is out of your way and just sew the pocket. Check to make sure there are no holes and repeat the process for the other pocket. If you lay the top front of your skirt up, you can now reach your hand inside and see that there's a pocket. 
but what you'll notice is that it kind of moves around a lot. So we want to make sure that our pocket stays in position. So lay your skirt front nice and flat. Make sure that the pocket aligns with the top and sides of your skirt rectangle. And then pin the pocket in place at the top edge and at the side. So let's zoom in for a closer look at that. So we're securing our pocket at the top and we're securing the pocket at the side. So we're gonna go back to the sewing machine and we're gonna baste in those two sections. So using a quarter inch seam allowance, we're gonna baste along this pocket section here and you can feel it underneath your skirt fabric. It's depending on the size of your pocket, that section could vary, but it's just a couple inches. Um, and so that needs to be secured. Same with on the side of your pocket, you can feel the fabric underneath your skirt front you want to secure it, so baste it in place using a quarter inch seam allowance on both the top and the sides. And you're going to do that for both pockets. We've now finished adding our pockets to the front of our skirt. So we're ready to move on to the next step. So if you didn't make pockets for your skirt, this is where you'd begin. So you're going to take your front piece of your skirt and you are going to align it with the back piece of your skirt. So grab your second rectangle that you're using for the back of your skirt, identify the top edge and align it with the top edge of your front rectangle. Turn your fabric. Align the side edges and pin. So I'm now pinning the front rectangle and the back rectangle together at the sides. This skirt has a slit at each side on the bottom in order to allow for ease of movement. Now you can decide how long you want those slits to be. I decided that I like to make my slits about five inches from the bottom edge. And if the bottom of your fabrics don't align up perfect, don't worry, we can trim those. So when you're pinning the side edge of your skirt, identify the bottom and mark five inches up from there. Um, if you don't want your slits to be so big, you can make it smaller than that. If you want them larger, you can make a bigger number. Um, but the hem will go up to about um, the one and a half inch mark here. Um, so keep that in mind. And slits are optional. Uh, you don't have to do slits if you don't want to. So if you prefer not to have slits in the side of your skirt, just go ahead and pin all the way down to the bottom. I'm gonna put a double pin at my mark so that I remember to stop there. So I'm gonna sew the side of my skirt I'm gonna start at the top point here. I'm gonna start at the top side and I'm gonna sew all the way down to the side until I get to my mark for my slit. And I'm gonna do that with a half an inch seam allowance. The side seam of my skirt is now sewn. And notice I have a slit open at the bottom. If the bottom edge of your skirt doesn't line up, go ahead and trim them to be the same. 
For our next step, we'll head to the ironing board. Press the side seam open. And in the bottom section where you have your slit, pretend as if it was sewn. So make this look just like you sewed the seam all the way down. And press. So when you're looking at your pressed seam, it should be difficult to tell where it's actually been sewn and where it hasn't. But now we have a nice finished edge here where our slit is. Let's take a look at the side seam for our slits. We want these seam allowances to stay in place. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna stitch kind of a part of a box around this opening. So we're going to stitch up one side, over and across, and down the other. I like to put a pin to mark where the top of my slit is. So right here is the top of my slit. I'm gonna stitch up one side with about a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I'm gonna go up above my pin, about 3 8 turn, come back down, again 3 8 from the slit. Um, just like on the pockets, I like to do double stitching, but you don't have to do that. So I'm gonna go up, over, and down with a 3 8 inch seam allowance, and then I'm gonna do the same thing again with a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm gonna do that for the slit that's on the left and I'm gonna do it for the slit that's on the right. So let's go to the sewing machine. Our slit's now been sewn in place. We've got two rows of stitching, keeping that nice and flat and to help prevent fraying. And so up next, we're ready to work on our hem. Let's work on the hem of our skirt. So this is the bottom edge of our skirt where the slits are. We're gonna hem this with a half an inch seam allowance. So the way I like to do that is to draw a line across the edge that's one inch from the bottom edge. So I'm gonna grab my ruler and I'm gonna draw a line one inch from the bottom edge. Now I'm gonna to go to the ironing board press up the hem, we're going to take our raw edge of the bottom of the skirt and fold it up to touch that line and we're going to press. One thing I've found sometimes when pressing hems is that these little edges at the very end can kind of stick out sometimes. So here's a trick that I like to do. I like to take the corner of my hem and I like to fold it in towards the interior of the fabric. And then I like to fold it back in place. So it's like you have a little triangle at this corner from your first fold line here up to the edge of the fabric. And you're gonna fold that corner down to your fold line and then fold the edge up in place and press again. Now this is not something you have to do. It's just something that I found works really good for me. Do that for both corners and then press the fabric up one more time, roughly the same amount.
I'm going to stitch along the hem again, this time with a 3 8 inch seam allowance, just because I like the look of the twin stitching. So this is optional. Once you've finished sewing your hem, go ahead and press again. This may seem redundant, but it really does help with the overall look and finish of your garment. And our hem is finished. Once your hem is finished, go ahead and turn your skirt right side out. Lay it really flat and make sure that your pockets are all nice and flat as well. So you don't want to feel any bumps or any puckers. So if you notice any folds of fabric underneath, go ahead and smooth it out so that it lays nice and flat. What we're going to do next is mark a half an inch down from the top edge. So grab a fabric marking tool and a ruler. You can also use your gauge for this if you don't have a fabric ruler. But we're going to draw a line a half an inch from the top edge. And we're going to draw that line on the right side of the fabric. And we're going to do so on both sides. Go ahead and set your skirt aside for a moment. Up next, let's work on our waistband. So you should have for your waistband um, a piece of elastic. Probably anywhere from a half inch wide to one inch wide would be sufficient. So you're going to take your strip of elastic and you're going to fold it in half and we're going to stitch along the short ends with a half an inch seam allowance. So we're going to stitch the two ends together with half an inch seam. So let's do that. If you want to sew over it a couple times and back the stitch well to make sure it's secure. Now I've used um, contrasting thread here, but you'd probably want to use coordinating. I just did this so you can see it. So now I'm going to take my elastic and I'm going to open up this seam. So we've got it stitched. Now press that fold open. And now we're going to stitch on each side of our original seam. So we're going to sew down one side and down the other with about a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance on each side. Make sure it's nice and flat. Again, repeat on the other side. You can also use a triple stitch for, for added strength. So we now have our seam sewn together, stitched together in the middle, and then stitched flat on either side. My waistband is now sewn together. So my next step is to divide my waistband into eight equal sections. I can do this by measuring the circumference and dividing by eight, or you can figure it out by folding, which is the method I prefer. The first thing I like to do is identify the center back. So my seam where I sewed previously is my center back. So that center seam right in the middle there, that's going to be the center back of my waistband. To find the halfway point, I'm going to fold my elastic at that point and stretch it until it's flat. So there's one end, stretch it till it's flat. And this fold here will be my halfway point. So I'm going to put a pin right there to mark halfway. So I now have two pins 
in my waistband, marking the center back and halfway around will be the center front. Next, I'm going to mark the quarters. So halfway between the half points is the quarters. So if you align your two pins, center back, center front, if you align those two pins, the folds on the side here will be your quarters. So I'm gonna mark this section and I'm just putting a pin through a single layer of the elastic. So I kind of pinch it with my fingers and then just put the pin through one layer. So again, line up center front and back. This fold here is your quarters. To get eighths, you simply fold those sections in half again. So find two pins, align the two pins, and mark halfway in between. Do this for each quarter section. You should now have eight pins in your waistband. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And they should be equal distances apart. If they're not, double check. Now you want to do this exact same thing, this exact same process with the top edge of your skirt. So divide your skirt into eight equal sections along the waistline in the same manner. I've pinned the top edge of my skirt, the waistline, um, with marks for eighths sections just like my waistband. So I have eight pins here marking my skirt into eighths so that I can apply my waistband. Um, the reason we did that is so that our gathers will be evenly spaced along our skirt. We don't want to end up with one side being really bunchy and the other side not. We want it all to be evenly distributed around the waist. So that's why we take care to measure this in equal sections. We're ready to apply the waistband to the top edge of our skirt. So take your elastic waistband and turn it right side out. We're gonna place it on top of the top edge of our skirt. So my skirt is also right side out. So identify the center back of the skirt and the center back of your elastic. The center back is that seam that we sewed. And remember the wrong side will have the edges of the elastic visible. The right side, you won't see those. So the wrong side of my elastic is going down I'm going to align the edge of my elastic at the center points. So let's take a closer look. I want the bottom edge of the elastic here to touch the line that I drew. So it's going to be overlapping the top edge of the skirt a half an inch. So I'm gonna line up those two center points, the center back with the center back, and I'm going to pin it in place. I'm just gonna use one of my pins that I already had. I find it works easiest for me if the pin is angled just a smidge, but that's up to you. You do want to take care, you want to make sure that it goes through both the fabric and the elastic twice. So it's gonna go down through the fabric and elastic and up through the fabric and elastic. If it doesn't do that, it won't hold it in place. And with the method that we're gonna use to sew this, it's really important that it's secure. So we're gonna keep doing this process and we're gonna go around the top edge of the skirt, aligning our pins. So we're putting eight sections with eight sections. So I'm gonna go around the skirt and I'm gonna take the next pin and the, the waistband and I'm gonna line it with the next pin on the top of the skirt. Align up that bottom edge of the elastic with your mark so it's overlapping your fabric a half an inch. Use your pin to secure it in place and then you can remove your marker. Keep going all the way around the top edge. Thank you. 
our waistband is all pinned in place. The skirt's bigger than the elastic, so we have these little poochie gaps, which is just fine. Uh, but now it's all pinned in equal sections. And so we're gonna go to the sewing machine to sew this. Uh, you want to make sure that your sewing machine has a zigzag stitch. Um, since the elastic stretches, you need to make sure that you have a stitch that stretches. So we're gonna be sewing the next step with a zigzag stitch that has a width of about 3.5 and a length of about 2.5 or three. To sew this section, it's just a little bit different. Since our fabric and our elastic are not lining up perfectly, we're going to have to stretch them to fit this means that you're going to have to guide the fabric from the back over here as well as from the front over here. So you'll notice that I'll be stretching my elastic in both directions as I'm sewing. You're going to want the side of your zigzag to hit really close to the edge of this elastic. You don't want it to go over if you can prevent it, but just real close to the edge of the elastic. So we'll be zigzagging back and forth just along this far interior edge, the edge that is closest to our skirt. If you have the option, you want to make sure that your needle will start and stop in the down position. That will help you uh, when you're aligning your fabric. So first we're going to do just a little back stitch. So let's go forward a couple stitches and back a couple stitches. And I'm going to grab at my eighth inch mark. So right here, this pin right here is one of my eighth sections. So I'm going to hold there. I'm also going to hold my fabric behind my foot here and I'm going to pull. I'm going to stretch my elastic so that my el elastic is flat and my fabric is flat. And so I don't want any puckering in either place. I'm also going to check to make sure that the edge of my elastic is lining up with my line that I do drew previously. So there are a lot of things to consider. You have to stretch, you have to align, and you have to watch your zigzag position. So it's okay if when you're sewing this, you go really slow and you stop a lot. That's completely normal. So here we go. I'm stretching from the front and the back. Once I get to my eighth section, once I get to my pin where I was holding, I can't hold it there anymore. So I take out my pin, I'm going to grab my next eighth section, and I'm gonna check to make sure my fabric's in the right place. I'm gonna get a good grip on that pin Although I'm going to be very careful not to poke myself. I'm going to get a good grip on the back edge that I've already sewn. And I'm going to pull my elastic. And I'm going to guide my fabric through from the front and the back. Watch the placement of your zigzag. If you notice that something's not lining up or it's starting to veer off the path, just go ahead and stop and rearrange your grip. And repeat this process all the way around the skirt. Take care when you get to your seams. If you haven't finished those off, if you've done what I did and just press, take care to make sure those seams are open. To protect your fingers, you can use your purple thing or stiletto or whatever you have to help make sure that fabric's in the right position. 
you also want to take care around the pockets. So I'm going to get a grip on the front, a grip on the back, and find my line, and pull, and stitch. coming up right here is one where you have to be the most careful. Um, where your pocket is, you want to take care to make sure it doesn't accidentally get folded up this way. Make sure it's lying nice and flat so if you have to stop again in this section uh, to realign or to adjust or to use your purple thing, go ahead and do that because you really want to make sure your pocket lays nice. checking my fabric underneath to make sure it's all nice and flat. Adjusting my grip, aligning my line, and You can now see that our skirt is attached. So double check, look around your whole skirt, make sure that you have your zigzag in place and make sure that all of the fabric has been caught underneath. Um, I've used a contrasting thread here. You would probably want to use a coordinating thread. I just did this so you could see it. But now when you pull, you can stretch the elastic quite a bit without breaking your stitches. Our elastic's now attached to the top of our waistband and we are almost finished. The last step, we're going to take our elastic waistband and we're gonna turn it to the wrong side. So take your elastic and turn it to the wrong side of the fabric. When you pull, so it starts all scrunched because we got gathers from the elastic, when you pull, your elastic and your fabric should once again lay flat. So I'm gonna go around my waistband, turning it to the wrong side and pulling it flat like this and I'm gonna pin it in place. Doing this around the whole waistband helps you to make sure everything's laying appropriately and it's also a good way to check to make sure that your previous stitches were done correctly and that you didn't miss anything. So go around the whole waistband, make sure everything's lined up, turn that elastic to the inside and pin it in place. It's okay if you see just a little bit of that elastic on the right side of the skirt. Sometimes the top edge does peek out just a smidge and that's fine. Okay, once you have your waistband all pinned in place, we're gonna go back to the sewing machine and we are going to stitch this with another zigzag stitch. We're gonna do kind of the same thing where we pull and stretch. Um, this time I'm going to use a bigger zigzag. I like my stitch length to be about 2.5 or three and I like my stitch width to be about five. The seam allowance that we use for this one is going to depend on the size of your elastic. You want your seam allowance to end up on this edge of the elastic band. You don't want it to go too far, you don't want to miss it, um, and you don't want it to go beyond, but you want it. You also don't want it to end up in the middle because we want it to lay nice and flat. So since the elastic I'm using is one inch wide, 
I'm going to use a seam allowance that is about three quarters, which means that the far edge of my zigzag should stop about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. So we'll go back and forth in this section, the sides of my zigzag about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. So let's go back to the sewing machine. Okay, let's go ahead and sew our final stitch for our waistband. We've got the zigzag stitch set to a stitch width of five and a stitch length of three. And I'm gonna do a quick zigzag to start. I'm using a seam allowance of three fourths of an inch. And again, because we have to stretch, we're gonna guide from both the front and the back. So I'm gonna grab my fabric in the front, I'm gonna grab my fabric in the back, and I'm gonna pull until it's nice and flat. And so again, go sew if you need to, because you need to align this edge with your seam allowance guide, and you need to make sure everything stays nice and flat. So here we go. I'm noticing that it's puckering right here just a little bit, so I'm going to stop. I'm going to rearrange my fabric, get a better grip, and then keep going. Whenever I need to stop to remove a pin, I am letting go of both the front and back of my fabric, and I'm making sure I have a grip on both before I start again. Notice right here at the pocket, we've got to be careful. We want to make sure that the pocket's lying nice and flat. So I'm going to stretch it just a bit. Put a pin on the side to help keep it in place. I'm going to have my purple thing handy just in case I need it to help me guide my fabric through. frequently here to make sure that it's not going to roll on me. Now if you have a friend or neighbor or someone who can help you with this little spot, it is helpful just to have another pair of hands. But if you don't, just do your best. Once you get over that one little section, the rest is usually smooth sailing. Our elastic waistband's now attached. You'll notice that it stretches quite a bit, which is awesome. And there's one last thing you can do. You can go ahead and try on your skirt and you'll notice that the pockets puff up quite a bit here. Um, if that's not something you like, if that bothers you, you can go ahead and you can do an additional row of top stitching. So you can sew from this top edge here, exactly on top of your previous stitches about a couple of an inches down just to hold this in place. You do want to stretch your elastic uh, at the beginning when you do that. Um, I usually sew down about two, two and a half inches. So I'm just gonna get my ruler and mark that. And there's my end point. So I'm gonna sew from the top of the waistband exactly down on my previous stitches right into that pin. Um, if this is something that you know that you like in the future, you can do this when you're constructing your pockets at the beginning, which does make the waistband uh, just a little bit easier. So whatever you do on one side, make sure you do the other. But if you try on your skirt and you feel you don't need that, then this is a step you can skip.